Ciao, Maeve. Are you ready for another Care Bears book? I am. This one is Care Bears, Being Brave is Best. Let's see who we're going to play with today. On Monday, Jenny was playing with her friends, Annie and Beth. They were turning the rope and Jenny was jumping. Beth chanted, all, all, all in together, girls. How do you like the weather, girls? January, February, Jenny, why did you stop? My throat hurts, Jenny said. Not again, Annie said. Your throat is always hurting. Dr. Williams told my mother if I got one more sore throat, they'd have to do something about it, Jenny said. I'm not going to tell my mother about this one. On Tuesday, Jenny felt worse. Her throat hurt so much she couldn't drink her orange juice at breakfast. Jenny, you don't look very well, her father said. Are you sure you feel all right? Jenny jumped up from the table. I feel great. I better go or I'll be late for school. In math class, Mrs. Burnett asked Jenny to do a problem on the board. When Jenny went to the board, she felt dizzy and she got the whole problem wrong. Jenny, you look very pale, Mrs. Burnett said. She felt Jenny's forehead. Why, you are burning up. You go right down and see the nurse. The nurse took Jenny's temperature. When she read the thermometer, she called Jenny's mother at once. Her mother picked Jenny up and took her directly to Dr. Williams' office. The doctor put a wooden stick on Jenny's tongue and made her say, ah. Uh, she looked in Jenny's ears and up her nose. Jenny, you get dressed while I talk to your mother in the next room, Dr. Williams said. Jenny began to feel frightened. Why couldn't the doctor speak in front of her? Did Dr. Williams know that she had something terrible? What was going to happen to her? While Jenny was getting dressed, she thought that she heard something about tonsils and hospitals. Oh, help, Jenny thought. Soon, Dr. Williams came back into the room. She sat down right next to Jenny. Jenny, I'm going to give you some pills to help you feel better now, but next week you're going to the hospital so that I can take those tonsils out. You don't need them anymore. They are very large and sore and they make your throat hurt. Will it hurt, asked Jenny. You will be asleep during the operation, Dr. Williams answered so you won't feel a thing. But when you wake up after the operation, your throat will hurt a little bit. Don't worry, it won't take long for you to feel just fine again. After this, Jenny, you won't have those nasty sore throats anymore. Dr. Williams stood up. Now I want you to go home and think about what I said. If you have questions, you can call me anytime. Jenny and her mother slowly drove home. Dr. Williams says your daddy and I can spend the night in the hospital with you so we can be near you the whole time, her mother said. Jenny didn't answer. She was trying to be brave. She wasn't going to talk about the hospital. She wasn't even going to think about it. She would think about something nice instead, she decided, something like horseback riding. But that night, Jenny couldn't get to sleep. Her throat hurt and it was hard to think about anything else. She wondered what it would be like to spend the night in a great big hospital. She curled up tight and put her head under her pillow. Suddenly, she heard a pleasant voice calling her name. Hello, Jenny. Come on out from under that pillow. Why, I slid all the way down a rainbow from the land of Carolot just to see you. Jenny peeked out. There sitting on her bed was a pink bear with a rainbow on her tummy. Hello, I'm Cheer Bear. My friends, the other Care Bears and I are always watching out for people who are sad or scared. The fuzzy pink bear cuddled up next to Jenny. Now tell me what's bothering you. I'm trying to be brave. I don't wanna talk about it, Jenny sniffed. She was about to cry. Cheer Bear, who always knew just the right thing to say, answered, being brave and being quiet are two different things. How can people help you if you won't tell them what's wrong? Then the little pink bear skipped across the room and turned on the light. 
That's better, Cheer Bear said. Now we can see what we are saying, ha ha. So Jenny told Cheer Bear about her sore throat and the hospital and the operation. Doesn't it feel a little better now that you've told someone? Asked Cheer Bear as she settled herself down on the bed. I guess so, Jenny answered. I know it's a little scary to think about going into the hospital, but remember, added Cheer Bear, who always knew just the right thing to say, your mother and father will be there with you. Dr. Williams is a fine doctor who knows everything about tonsils, Cheer Bear smiled. And all of us in Carolot are going to be looking down and thinking of you. Are you really, Jenny asked. Sure we are, Cheer Bear gave Jenny a soft, cozy hug and tucked her sheets in again. Now you'd better go back to sleep. Will you come back and see me again, Jenny asked. I'll send my good friend, Funshine Bear. He'll come and see you in the hospital. Don't forget to look for him, Cheer Bear called as she turned off the light. Jenny watched as Cheer Bear walked up a rainbow that suddenly appeared outside her window. She smiled and soon went fast asleep. Today's the day, Jenny's mother said one morning during the next week. Dr. Williams is expecting you. She reached down and gave Jenny's hand a squeeze. Jenny got up and packed her suitcase with her favorite pajamas, her toothbrush, and her soft, cuddly doll. She ate her breakfast very slowly. She said goodbye to her two goldfish. Then she got into the car with her mother and father. When they got to the hospital, her mother had to fill out some papers at the front desk. So Jenny's father took her up to her room. They walked down a long hall. Nurses were bustling back and forth, carrying trays. Jenny heard someone crying. I'm a little bit scared, Daddy, said Jenny. Jenny's father leaned down and scooped her up. It felt good to be carried, even though Jenny knew that she was really too old for that sort of thing. A nurse with a nice smile came up to them. You must be Jenny, she said. We've been waiting for you. My name is Miss Kent. I'll show you to your room. Jenny had a small sunny room with a bed by the window. There's a drawer here for your toothbrush and for your hair ribbons, said Miss Kent. Here's a closet where you can hang up your clothes. Then she pointed to a button next to the pillow. Anytime you need something, Jenny, you just push this button and I'll come and check on you. See you later. Jenny's father helped her change into her pajamas. I'm just going to find mommy, he said. I'll be right back. Jenny looked around the room. There were pretty paintings on the wall, but there was a funny looking machine on the wall right above her head. Jenny hugged her doll close. She didn't want to be in the hospital. She wanted to go home. Psst, Jenny, I'm down here, said a merry voice. There, peeking up from the side of the bed, was a yellow bear. Oh, you must be Funshine Bear, Jenny cried. Cheer Bear said that you'd come to visit me. Funshine Bear did a little dance and jumped onto Jenny's bed. And here I am. How are you, Jenny? All of us up in the land of Carolot have been thinking about you. I'm a little scared, Funshine. This hospital is so big. I want to be in my own room again. But look outside, Jenny. The sun is shining and the birds are singing. Look on the bright side of things. This afternoon, the operation will be all over. In no time at all, you'll be back at school, playing with your friends and enjoying ice cream. And no more sore throats, said Jenny. That's right, said Funshine with a little giggle. Now you're looking on the bright side of things. Aha, I hear some important people coming, so I have to go. Remember, we're thinking about you up there. Then Funshine hopped off the bed, once again did a little dance and vanished in the wink of an eye. Jenny looked under the bed, he wasn't there, and he wasn't in the closet either. She tiptoed to her door to see who was coming, and she almost bumped into Dr. Williams and her parents. Why, Jenny, you're just the person I was coming to see, said Dr. Williams. How are you feeling? I'm a little scared, Jenny said, but I don't want any more sore throats, and I know tomorrow I'll feel glad you took those dumb tonsils out. That's what I like to hear, said Dr. Williams. Hop up on this bed. We're ready to go. 
The nurse came and gave Jenny a shot. It hurt a little bit, but soon Jenny began to feel sleepy. She held her mother's hand as Dr. Williams pushed the bed down the long hall. Just before Jenny fell asleep, she remembered Funshine's little dance. She smiled and closed her eyes. When Jenny woke up after the operation, her mother and father were sitting by the bed. Hello, Jenny, her father said. How do you feel? Sleepy, said Jenny. She looked out the window. The sun is still shining, isn't it, Funshine Bear? She whispered. What did you say, dear? Her mother asked. But Jenny didn't answer. She had already gone back to sleep. The next week, Jenny was back skipping rope with Beth and Annie. Got a sore throat today, Jenny, Annie teased. Of course not, said Jenny, and I'm glad I went to the hospital. It wasn't really bad at all. And then Jenny jumped over the rope and chanted, one, two, and nothing to fear. I've got friends named Funshine and Cheer. And that is the end of Being Brave is Best. Until next time, ciao, mate.